21.5 centimeters. Hm. Look what I found, Louise. How cool is this? It's a distressable junkalosity. Oh. I'm sure you can make something out of it. That's for sure. But I also have something for you, Nicole. Look. Welcome to Distressable Junkalocities. Transform your found objects into junk journal art. Junkalocities is a coined term combining junk journal and curiosities, created by Nicole at Nature Spirit Journals and myself, Luisa Heinzel. Just dig out all those forgotten curious findings from your drawers, the ones you've kept to use in your junk journal one day. We are celebrating 20 years of distress this year and invite you to celebrate, craft and most importantly, distress along with us. <laughs> This folding rule has definitely seen better days. Or what do you think? <laughs> Look, <laughs> I find this so funny. This looks just... ah. What happened here? But this is the perfect material for today's idea. This is the perfect distressable junkalocity. I have found an idea in Tim's book, Distressables 2, which I want to use as an inspiration for today's project. He has made some custom art tools. Look, <laughs> this is so cool. He has made these by taking some wooden blocks and he has glued some paper here and then he has put them to those art tools like this knife and this pokey tool and I think this is a really really cool idea this is just so unique and this is the perfect thing to have in your craft room isn't it I have thought about which kind of thing I want to make and then I realized <clears throat> that I don't have a craft knife like this And my pokey tool also looks different to his, obviously. So I can't do this idea with a knife or a pokey tool. And then I saw this. And I thought, this pen is just amazing. And a pen is something that I really need in my craft studio and that I use on a daily basis. So I want to make a pen similar to this but not with the same materials Tim has used for this, but with a folding ruler. And I also want to show you an alternative in this video if you don't have a folding ruler or if you don't want to use something like such a knife or a saw or if you can't handle dust because we are going to use some sandpaper on the folding rule. And if you can't handle that, health-wise, then I thought it's good to have an alternative. So in the end, we are going to have something like this, one pen made out of a folding rule, and the other one just made from paper. Ho ho ho! <laughs> so what are we going to need? Of course, <clears throat> we need this, and I want to start with this, and I will construct the body of the pen and while that is drying we are going to go on with the paper alternative and then we switch back to this and so on so that we can use our drying times for going on and that is then you know a really time saving thing hopefully we are going to need some ballpoint pens I have bought these in a store that is comparable with what you know as a dollar store. I will show you the package. Perhaps this kind of ballpoint pen is available in your area too. And I want to point out, <laughs> ballpoint pen, I point it out. <laughs> that is somehow funny. That you need a ballpoint pen where you can take out this ink cartridge from here. Yeah, So you have the pen body and some of those ballpoint pens have another like construction where you can take out the cartridge from here from from the end of the pen please don't choose one of those you need one where you can take out the cartridge from here otherwise you would have to 
change the construction I show you in this video a little bit. It is not so difficult, but if you want to craft along with me, then try to find a pen like this where you can take this out here from the front. We don't need those caps for today's project, but this is also a distressable junkalocity. So we don't throw this away, but we put this into our drawer of distressable junkalocities to use it for another project. <laughs> So here you can see with the different colors of the ballpoint pen, these little things here on the top are also different colors so that you can see which color you have in your hands. You can also see it here, but this will be invisible later. But here on the front, I want to change this blue color also into black. That seems to be a little bit confusing because I mean, you know, why would you change this color? Then you can't see anymore which color it is. But in the end, a little bit of the ballpoint pen will peek out here. Can you see that? And I don't want to have this thing blue. I think that is not nice and it doesn't fit to the color of my folding rule. So I want to make that black. So I'm going to take an adding and then I'm just going to take this and I just scribble over this to make it black. So then this can dry. And I'm also going to take both of those pen bodies to make this here black, just like, you know, a centimeter or so. Holy moly, I can't do that in the air. So that this is black as well and that this like blue weird color is not shown later. Then it's very important that you have a really ugly cutting mat. <laughs> I'm really sorry. I normally don't use this in my videos, but <laughs> you have to go through this today. So then we can we can look how the folding rule is constructed and how we want to take it apart to get the single pieces that we need to build this body here. And I want to have some of this metal here shown later. So I'm going to take this and I... Um, hold this here a little bit in the air and then I try to break it here somewhere here so that a piece of this is still in this like mm, how is this called this little thing where this metal is it's sitting in there somehow and I want to have that uh, on my pen later as well then it looks somehow like this. It has broken a little bit regular, but I think it's okay. Mm, we can try to break this similar to the other one, but I have to think about this. Let's hold it like this. And then we can try to break it again here. And don't be afraid. This looks a little bit dangerous, but it isn't. First I thought this is dangerous and you could hurt yourself. But look, I mean... Be careful, yeah, if you have here like loose pieces from the wood, be careful, but as you can see, it's not sharp or something. You, I think you can't hurt yourself. I mean, if you close your eyes and do this, <laughs> perhaps you could hurt yourself. So then when we have one of these pieces, we can take one of those pen bodies. I'm going to take this and here is going to be the end of the pen. So it's like this. This is the, this end piece and I will stay a little bit away from this end here so that I am on the safe side of this whole project. <laughs> and now you can see this is a little bit like this is longer than the pen is. And here I have my mark and then I have about half of a centimeter where the body of the pen is then longer than this case later on will be. Meaning the body of our ballpoint pen is going to peek out from our new pen later here a little bit. We need this little distance that is very important. If this distance here from the body to the point here is too small, then you can't write anymore because then when you try to write this corner here touches your desk and then you can't write anymore so you need this here this is in um, in total this is about i would say a centimeter or so oh even one and a half centimeter so make sure that you have this thing 
peeking out enough. But we can manage that really easily. So we are going to take <coughs> this here. And then I'm just going to take a knife. Really sharp knife. I press this down. And then I go over this here like so. Just like um, with a saw or something. And when I have a little slot. Then I can just carefully without much pressure. Go through here and cut this off. And when you are nearly through it. You can just easily break it so then <clears throat> we are going to need three more pieces which have exactly the same length like this next i'm going to take a piece of sandpaper to make these cut ends here a little smoother that helps us to glue the whole thing together later a little bit easier so i will do that for all of the four pieces so then we can already assemble the pen body and for that i've already put my pieces here into a specific order so that i can't get confused while gluing them together as you can see on this pen we have this one metal piece here here is no metal and here's the other metal piece and here's no metal. Do you know what I mean? So I've already put it, put this into exactly that order. Metal, no metal, metal, <laughs> no metal, so that I can't get confused. Then I'm going to take my first piece. I've decided that I want to have this on the outside of the pen. So I'm going to take this and turn that around so that the inside is facing me. Then I'm going to take this little piece. This has to go to the outside, of course. So I'm going to turn that like this. And we want to glue this now here onto the other piece like so. As you can imagine, this is um, relatively hard to glue. If you use the right glue, everything is going to be sturdy in the end and it will hold forever. But this gluing time and there's like wiggle room of the glue is something that could wreck your nerves a little bit so I want to give you a tip what you could do to make your life easier so first of all I'm going to take this and I put my glue here this is bookbinders glue that is good for gluing uh, wood on wood you could also alternatively use some collage medium or something similar please use a glue which can handle gluing wood on wood and then i'm putting it here like so relatively high yeah you can see it is relatively much n not much not much like thick but high yeah from the surface half of the surface approximately then i'm going to take this and place this here And then you could take something like this. These are some of those etc. pieces by Stampers Anonymous and Tim Holtz. They come in a pack and when you buy them, they are like so together and then you can just break them apart. And this is relatively sturdy. Alternatively, if you don't have something like this, you could also search for like a small wooden piece or something which you could use to glue here just to make a little like bridge in between of those pieces and to have a bigger surface for the glue to grab. That is the only reason for this. So I'm just putting a little bit glue on here. I don't need the glue here on the other side because I already have it on the folding rule piece here. And then I can press this together and wait a little bit until the glue grabs. I can't re recommend to use clamps or something. I mean, you could try that, of course. You can try everything you want. And if you can manage to clamp this together, then I'm relatively proud of you. <laughs> I have tried it, but it didn't work for me. But with this glue, it's good because it grabs relatively fast. So then we can go on with the next piece. And now we have to be relatively careful how we glue this together. I want my pen to be a square here later 
and not a rectangle. So we have to be careful how we glue the single pieces together now. This piece here with the metal is touching my desk. And this piece here is of course also touching my desk because it's laying here. And I've just put it against this piece. So this is touching the desk. When we now <clears throat> take the next piece, we don't put it to the desk and glue it, but we take it and put it on top of this piece of the folding rule. Yeah? Then in the end, this is a little higher than this and we can easily attach this piece and then we have a square in the end. This time I put the glue to this edge here, just like this, and then I glue this here. I'm going to take another of these little bridges and glue that there as well so that this can hold really really well together. Just a little note, when you choose these little pieces you want to glue in here, please check if your pen can still sit in between of those and that it still has enough space to be in here. Otherwise you would get a problem later and of course I don't want that you get a problem. <laughs> so I put the glue here to this edge so that I can put it against this and on the other side we have to put the glue on here. And then we are going to let this whole thing dry until it's really, 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 really dry. And while the other thing is drying, we can go on with the second pen and construct the base for this. So the body here is made out of such a thicker paper. This is just one of those dividers which you can put into a folder. And first of all, <clears throat> I'm going to determine the length of the pen body. So I'm going to take, how can I show you that? Let's take this. I'm going to take this line here on my grid and then I leave about a quarter of an inch so that the end here is peeking out exactly the same like on the other one. That is, I mean, a quarter of an inch is about half of a centimeter. Ooh, then I press this down and I make a little mark here so that then my paper in the end is a little longer just like this exactly the same like we've done it with the folding rule piece as well now I'm going to cut this off here and then I'm going to take a scoring board and put my paper here and then we have to decide how wide this shall be. Later on, I want to glue these ideology letters onto my pen. But of course, you can glue on such a pen whatever you want. When you buy those, they look like this. And as you can see, they are all different sizes. Meaning, the first thing that you have to do is you have to decide about the size of the pieces you want to glue to your pen and that determines the width of one of these sides here. Yeah, I think uh, you got me, hopefully. <laughs> so um, one thing, you can't take those pieces which are like really narrow because you need a little space for your pen. Can you see that? This would be not enough. So what I like to do is I like to take a ruler and I like to take my pen and then put it on here. And then you can see if I now look to one and a half centimeter approximately, then I have relatively much space so that the pen has space in here. Yeah, so one and a half centimeter, I would say that is a good thing. Uh, one and a half centimeter, let me just check, that is about three quarter of an inch. If you don't have those ideology letters, you could also take some letters from a magazine and glue them to like a little sturdier paper. 
or a little cardboard or something like that. You could also use some book pages or whatever you want. Of course, that doesn't, ha doesn't have to be something that is a square or a rectangle. You could also take some strips of paper. For example, if you like ideology, you could take the collage strips and here it's a really really good and easy thing because these are one and a half inch wide and if you cut those in half lengthwise then you have the perfect measurements for such a pen i've already already tried that out i've made one with these collage strips i will show you that alternative in the end of the video so let's take a bone folder where is it holy crap and then let's fold this paper so uh, i will talk in centimeters now but of course you can go with inch as well so i'm going to score at one and a half centimeters just like this then at three four point five and six so that we have one two three four of these little strips which are going to become the sides here of the pen body later to glue this whole thing together we also need a fifth thing here so I'm going to score at 7.5 so that this thing later on is going to become our gluing surface and now I go on with one and a half centimeters until the end of my paper because we will because we will need some of this here later for making the construction sturdier. So I'm always scoring one and a half centimeters here. I will explain in a second how to decide how many of these you will need and for what you will need that. And now I'm going to trim this off here, but I'm not going to trim it directly on this line, but a little bit more to the left. Then it's easier to glue the whole thing together. So I'm approximately cutting here, just the tiniest little bit on the left of this line. So then I'm going to take this piece and I'm folding all of these things to the inside then we can like roll it up just like so and then you can see this is going to become our little body for the pen so we're going to take this and put glue on here so then we can bring the end here to this little line there and then we can just glue it together like this and then we can take one of our pen bodies here and use that to press that a little bit so that the glue can grab really well. Make sure that this is really really well attached. You can also press it down like this. Oh I'm just realizing that this is way oh my goodness I have made several of these and I'm realizing now that you could also do it like this what the heck well it's a learning curve isn't it <laughs> holy moly that's way easier so that we have then we have this and as you can see this is flimsy and it is not sturdy enough and that's why we made these because now i'm going to take my paper trimmer again and now i want to cut off some Mm, angles here but I have to make sure that I cut like a little bit off from here so that this is not one and a half centimeter anymore but a little bit less so that it can slide in here really well so if I would cut it directly on the line it would get stuck in the body in the pen body so I'm going to just cut the tiniest bit off here and also on the other side and I'm cutting four of these before I put glue on here I am going to test if this fits in here I can see it glides in really really nicely and with these we are going to make this whole 
pen body sturdier. I like to press this together a little bit so that I can put it in here easier. And then I let this slide in here and I press it with my finger into this corner here. The same thing on the other side. And now I like to leave it and don't press it to the table again, but take this and make sure that everything is pressed down here really well so that the glue can grab there. So now you can see the first thing is here. So the next we are going to put here just the same way like we've done with it with the other one. So the two pieces we've just glued are now here where my fingers are. And then the next two pieces we are going to glue here so that then every corner has one of these pieces and that makes it really really sturdy. So then we can let this dry and then we can go on with this thing which already is completely dry. I'm going to take a sandpaper now because I want to distress on the one hand these edges here but also the surface if you want to make your own pen from such a folding rule then please check the surface of the material here. This one is really, really old already. And I have the feeling that those older folding rules have a different surface and also a different kind of printing here. I can go over this relatively extremely to distress the surface here. Can you see that it gets lighter here without scratching those numbers off yeah if i go over here the numbers still are here this print is really really good if you have a new folding ruler i have a piece here and you go over this with a sandpaper i've already done it here so let me show you the new uh, piece as well so this one here is just like it came from the store and this here i've already sanded down as you can see it's distressed a little bit but you can also see the numbers already come off here and if you do that too extremely with your sandpaper you could accidentally remove the numbers here and I guess that is not what we want because we want to see in the end that this pen was made from this folding rule yeah so if I want that if you want to take them off completely of course you could do that as well and if you go with your sandpaper paper like this, then you get this like straight edge. But if you go like this, so in this direction, you can also get really irregular areas like here, for example. So then we can already think about something that we can use to close the pen body here and here. Of course, you could use something like a sturdy cardboard or something like that but a, a good thing is I found out that some of these ideology letters have exactly the right size to go on here that is really cool I think I also had a T in this in this size can I find that because I would love to make a Tim pen <laughs> oh yeah it is look no that's the L Oh my goodness. Oh, I could make uh, I could take an L as well. I mean, I'm Louisa. <laughs> Let's see. If we don't find the T, then we are going to use the L. <laughs> oh, here it is. Oh no, it's too big. This is too big. That's it's overlapping here too much. No. Look, that would have been so cool. It's a little bit too big. Okay, so this wants to be a Louisa pen, so we are going to take this L. And then you have to find something where you can make a hole into one of those squares which is big enough so that you can put this through the hole. I found out that it's relatively easy to take a cropper dial and just punch in here to the center and then punch a little offset just to make the hole bigger. And now you have to make sure that this is really tight on here. Then you have an easier job 
to assemble this whole thing that I'm going to take my hot glue and I put a little bit around the ballpoint pen body first just like this so that this can hold there and then you can see the glue also wants to go to the square and I try to fill up this square with hot glue have a really nice surface of glue which we can then use to put it in here and I like to do it like Tim does it press it and then just you know it's not hot anymore yeah <laughs> so you can handle that relatively well I think then you can decide how heavy you want to have your pen this thing is already really really sturdy yeah but it's light it's really light you could now think okay i want to have a light pen everything is fine then just take the other piece and just glue it down here and close the pen if you think i want to have my pen a little heavier and that's what i am thinking at the moment then you could also fill this whole thing with hot glue to make it a little heavier and then glue this this here on top so then we can just let the hot glue run in here do that slowly otherwise it runs not so well and just let that run down there until this whole thing is filled with the glue and because we are talking about searching for alternatives and you know i want you to do your own thing and do the things that are comfortable for you of course you could of course also think i don't want to use too much hot glue or perhaps hot glue is expensive in your area or i don't know what reason that could be you could of course also take some other pieces like this wood for example and just put that additionally in here to fill up Ooh, where's my second stick ah, where's my second stick oh no where is it ah, i have to be fast because it's hot glue oh no holy moly sometimes strange things are happening here eh. let's press this in here and that makes the pen of course even more heavy and I'm really, really excited what you will think about Nicole's idea on how to make those fancy pens. You can find the link to her video in the description box of this video. And I just wanted to mention, if you don't know Nicole yet, she has a German YouTube channel. So, so all of her videos are in German. But of course, you can activate the subtitles so that you can follow along. And I also think even if you are like me and you, you don't like to activate subtitles, then you can also easily follow her instructions just by watching the video. Of course, you could leave this pen exactly like it is. If you like this, then leave it. You don't have to do what I do next, but <clears throat> we are talking about, where is my cartridge? We are talking about 20 years of distress and we are talking about techniques, how you can distress your things. And because of that, I want to go a step further and make this a little more grungy. <clears throat> since we all are happy <laughs> that scorched timber arrived <laughs> thanks again for your wonderful words and for hoping together with me that it arrives soon it was really 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 cute i want to ink around here a little bit i'm going to use oops i'm sorry you can't see it scorched timber ink first I try to get this really, really irregular. And if you have a folding rule which has like a relatively slippery surface like this newer one has, please make sure that you test, for example, on one of those pieces that you have left over, if the ink you want to use can dry on this surface. It gets stained a little bit. 
but the most of it, it would come off if you go over this with your finger. So even if you would let it dry longer, for a longer time, then it wouldn't stay on here because it's, you know, it's glossy. And Distress Ink is not made to dry on those glossy and slippery surfaces. Instead of using Distress Ink on such a slippery surface, you could use some alcohol ink or acrylic paint, of course. I also want to take some oxide ink scorched timber and this makes it look relatively dirty and I like that and since we have these metal pieces which look relatively new compared to the rest I mean <clears throat> this was protected over the years from the wood from the folding rule and because of that this looks relatively new and we can crunch this up a little bit as well and distress this with two different mediums in a relatively short time. So let's take some grit paste crypt. Alternatively, you could also take another grit paste, like the grit paste opaque. You could even take the grit paste translucent, of course. That would look perhaps interesting as well. I want to go with the crypt paste because it gives this like dirty, slimy <laughs> finish in the end. And I'm going to smear this in here. Here on the end, I also want to fill up these little gaps that came because, you know, this is handmade and we have glued it together with our own, own hands and like, like um, with eyeballing everything. And if I have some areas here, for example, there's a relatively ugly area in my eyes. We can fill this up and then it looks like with time there has come some dirt into these areas. And that's perhaps also a relatively realistic thing. I mean, if you use a folding rule on a construction site or something, then this would perhaps automatically happen. That it gets dirty and of course the grit paste is a little bit wet and with that the ink gets reactivated now and with that you can also get really nice effects and the paste gets stained a little bit from the ink as well we won't see much of that later because i'm going to add another medium in a second but uh, for those areas where where the second medium medium won't go this is good, you know. Then you have a little variation in the distressing here and in this crunch. Then I like to dry this just a little bit with my heat gun. Not completely, but just a little bit. You could let this air dry. And Tim also recommends to let this air dry. And of course, it's the safer way to dry this just you know let it air dry mm, when you take your heat tool then it could happen that you get some bubbles if you overheat the paste in this case I would say that is even good because we want to have grunge and we want to have this look really distressed but if you don't like bubbles and if you don't like too much much texture then just let this air dry <coughs> This is not completely dry yet, but I don't care because I made the experience that what I want to do now works even when this is not totally dry. So wh why shall I waste my time? <laughs> so I'm going to take this, just put it in here, and then I'm going to take some alcohol ink. I have chosen the colors Latte and Rust. I'm going to start with this one. And I want to let this run. here and with this method with the grit paste the alcohol ink now mm, stays there where the grit paste is I like to call that controllable grunge I guess that I am the person who has uh, come up with this name con controllable grunge I also have a video a really uh, let's say, intense video 
about controllable grunge. I will link that down below for you. Put a paste to your piece and then put the, the, the liquid medium on top and it stops exactly here where the paste ends. Can you see that? I also want to put some of that here to the metal to stain the metal a little bit as well. So this is rust. You can carefully touch it and then you can see you can go on because now I want to take <coughs> this weird uh, <laughs> thing here. This is just some water, mm, I guess some gesso and some, you know, ink or acrylic paint or something. This would normally go to my sink. But, uh, you know, for those projects, you can use something like this as well. It's just some dirty paintbrush water. You could alternatively, for the next step, also use some just some water. But I think with dirty water, in this case, it looks even better. And I'm just realizing that I want to have more oxide ink here to get more of this effect. So I'm going to use scorched timber oxide ink again. Okay, so I think now it's enough. And then let's just spritz ooh, some water on here and dry this. You could now take the, the excess off with a paper towel. Then those areas would get relatively light. I like to just dry it like this because in my eyes this looks more interesting, but please. As Tim would say, you do you. <laughs> and then we have this absolutely amazing effect. Look. So here we go. <laughs> really, really rusty and dirty and like wet folding rule pen. So this has dried completely as well and this is really really sturdy. If you have used a paper which was perhaps too thin or so and you can feel that it's not sturdy enough after drying then you could always glue more of these paper pieces in here of course but I also found another solution, the solution is called hot glue, uh, to make this even more sturdy and to solve the problem if this is not sturdy enough in this uh, stage, then you can make it even more sturdy and of course also heavier because I want to fill this with hot glue as well in a second. So as I told you, I want to take these little guys here. So the first thing that I now have to do is I have to find some pieces which fit on here because you know we've measured it but they have all different sizes so I'm going to take out those that have the width of my pen body here Whew, so here we go I felt a little bit like a squirrel in the forest searching for nuts <laughs> but now I have something here that um, doesn't only fit <laughs> the length of this Thing here that is now coincidence that when I put these together so like they will be glued later they have nearly exactly the right length for for this it's just a tiny little bit shorter this whole thing but that's okay we can um, make that work you could also build some nice words of course here like for example juxy <laughs> That's so funny. Or <laughs> I, can't, I can't even do my own joke. <laughs> Read this. That is a nice word, isn't it? But you could also go with words like Tim or Louise. Laugh. Or whatever you want yeah so you could even hide <laughs> little messages on such a pen 
this has driven me a little bit crazy because <laughs> Tim and H O L T Z is that English would also have worked, but I couldn't find a second T. And do you know why? I have used all of those T's obviously for my Tim Holtz Studio Tour journal. If you haven't seen that video, please check out the description box. I have the link down below there for you. I've made a journal that is uh, what is now, it's it's the end of January. Yeah, it's approximately one year ago. Mm, I've published the video, I guess, on January. ninth or 10th i think january 10th it was a few days after tim's birthday that doesn't matter <laughs> i wanted to make a little surprise for his birthday but i was a little too late because that journal has taken everything from me all of my energy i mean that was positive yeah like you would go to the gym then you know the gym would also take your energy but in a good way and I have put so, so many ideas into that. And there have been so many coincidences, which aren't coincidences in my eyes. <laughs> if you want to learn more about that, please watch the video. And uh, I have made a journal in the style of his studio. So I've watched his studio tour video and then I've turned, yeah, you can say I've turned his studio into a junk journal. The video is called What if Tim Holtz studio was a junk journal? And I had so much fun. It was just amazing to create that. So now I'm going to uh, distress the edges of all of these little squares with my sanding disc here. <clears throat> this is also a sandpaper. It's called sanding disc because it's from Ranger and you know they gave it this name. And you can just put this to a blending tool. This has this velcro stuff on there. And I mainly want to go around the edges here first. So I'm gluing these letters here. Make sure that everything is lined up really well. <laughs> this is so cool. Luisa. Tim. And love. <laughs> so then this can dry and while this is drying we can search for two pieces which fit onto the ends here i'm just thinking i i think i want to use a bigger one for here just because we have this little thing and i don't want to cut this off this is difficult to cut it off and there's no necessity to cut it off because we could use this and then it has like a little head here on the top. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's glue that in there. And I will take these and just put them in there so that I don't need so much of the hot glue like this then let's take the tea how the heck shall I center this now hmm. and I will also scratch a little bit over the surface here just like this and I'm going to do that here as well In this case, I think I want to take some oxiding scorched timber, but you could take the ink as well, of course. But for this here, uh, I want to use the oxide ink refiller 
in a second that's the reason why i use the oxide ink for this step as well but that really doesn't matter it's like you know a different effect of course but you could do both i'm going over this here now And you might think, what the heck is she doing? If you have never done this, you could think, oh my goodness, everything is brown in a second, but it isn't. Just please believe me. The letters <clears throat> have this paper surface, which is relatively smooth. And if you have inked all of this up, whoo, holy crap, why, ca why can't I get a whole piece of paper towel? <laughs> why? It's always the same thing. Where's my water now? Ah, here. If I take a paper towel and a tiny bit of water, you could also take a wet baby wipe and then go over this. You can see I take a little bit of the ink off here. And that is the ink which was on this like slippery surface from the letters before. Everywhere where we've sanded it and also where those like tiny scratches are, the ink goes into the material, meaning into the porous surface of the second layer of each of these squares. That means you can see those scratches really well and now you have several different shades of this ink and perhaps you quickly want to compare this before I do the other sides this is the inked side not inked <laughs> oh no <laughs> I'm just realizing that I probably had the chance to write timber. T -i -m -b -e -r. No! Ah! Oh no! How sad is that? <laughs> ah! And do you know what? Oh, I always wanted to explain that because that is something that you can't understand if you can't understand German. Okay, so when this color was released and Tim had his live on YouTube and he said Scotch Timber, Scotch Timber, Scotch Timber, then <laughs> suddenly Mario said that Timber has the name Tim in it. And that is, of course, a special thing, especially because this is the final distress color. But when I heard Mario saying that Timber has the name Tim, I was like, it not only has Tim's pre-name, Tim, but it also has his last name, if you mix German and English. And that is something that is so amazingly... <laughs> it's just cool. Because the word Timber... If you translate the word timber into German, it's Holz. But it's written a little differently than Tim's last name, but you say it the same way, you pronounce it the same way. So Tim's last name is of course written like this, Holz. If you translate timber to German, it's written like this. but you pronounce it exactly the same. It's the same. So this says Tim Holz in one word. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I find that so cool. That is just so cool. And it's, it's like, yeah, it's, it, it's something special, isn't it? And now you know that. And perhaps you want to tell it to your friends as well, if they like Tim as well friends who haven't seen this video <laughs> and perhaps you think what the heck is she talking about I don't get it that could also happen of course I'm really hoping that that won't happen but <laughs> who knows so we have this <laughs> and now let's decide what to do with this green shit there I mean 
was not acceptable. Um, we could just take a pen or something and scribble over there. But I want to do something else. I'm going to use some uh, texture paste opaque. Just smear it. Oh, that is too much. Into this little corner here. And now this is white, of course. Uh, that is better than green. <laughs> I mean, it was green before, but I don't want to have this like white yeah so i want to try something so i'm going to take the oxide ink refiller directly from this bottle i want to let <clears throat> this uh, run in here i don't know if i will need some water probably yes because i want to stain the paste while it's still wet because I want to know how this looks. That's the only reason. <laughs> I think that is a really interesting solution. Looks a little bit like brown bubble gum. I really like that. <laughs> okay, so shall we? Shall we or shall we not? And I'm scared. To be honest, I'm relatively scared. I... <laughs> I want, oh my goodness. Okay, let's take this. Let's put a tiny little bit here. Just a little drop. Let's start with really the tiniest amount. And let's, oh, let's then, perhaps I should take a paintbrush to apply the water. Where is my paintbrush? I want to try to let the water run into this little slot so that it then takes the oxide ink refiller with it so that it can run where it wants to run. Can you see that? Yeah, this is finished. In the beginning of the video, I promised I show you a variation of this idea made with the ideology collage strips. And of course, I will do that now. And that is a really easy thing for me because it's just like this. Finished. <laughs> I have just taken two of those strips. I have chosen two in a relatively neutral color palette, as you can see here on the pen. But as you can see, they come in different colors. Of course, you can choose, choose what you want. And you could also alternate the colors on the different sides of the pen, of course. I have taken two of the collage strips. Then I have just cut them in half lengthwise. And that gave me the width for this here automatically. After cutting the collage strips in half, I've taken a relatively small dotting tool, this one here, and I went over these little lines here where the single images on the collage strips end. And then I've inked those little areas. I wanted to reach that you can feel a little gap here. And that worked just wonderfully. Can you see that here, this little gap that came from the dotting tool here? After inking, um, I have glued everything on here and then I've inked around the edges like I've done it here. And then I've added some crackle paint, translucent. And after that was dry, I went over the crackled areas with some Lost Shadow crayon and that made that the crackles come out really, really well and that you can see them really well. 
in some spots here, especially here where is this dragonfly, look here, looks like a spider web around the dragonfly. So cool. And this also looks like a little bit like broken glass, somehow wet. And I really, really like this kind of distressing. So that's it. <laughs> I'm really happy with my new collection of fancy pens. And perhaps you would like to make some for your own craft room as well.